Yeah, so uh, my name is Ben um, Kifadi. I think right in front here, you might recognize me. I look like someone familiar in the, who was up here before. <laughs> this will be a context. So um, I was privileged enough to be a donor for stem cells. So during the first drive, when we were trying to get everyone registered in the Kenyan community for Kevin, we knew we needed to get as many people registered as possible. That's what Auntie was doing. Ian, I think the whole community kind of came together, trying to get everyone onto the list. Unfortunately for Kevin, mm -hmm, no one was a match. And this was in 2013, 20, I can't remember. I think uh, Kevin passed away in 2014. And I think when I was in university in 2015, I remember I was in my uni, forgotten about the whole drive, forgotten about everything, got a text, says, you're a match. And I was like, what do I do now? And I, texted, I texted Ian, it's like, what, what, what happens now? What happens, what happens next? So I was a bit panicky, I didn't know what to do, because obviously we want to kind of, everyone wants to kind of be part of it, they want, they, you're willing to do it, but when it actually happens, you're like, whoa, I didn't expect this. I know most of you have actually registered to be a donor, but when the call comes, when the text comes, what do you do? So I went through it and they said, can you give me a call? I went through, called them. They were very good, DKMS, took me through the process. They said, the first thing they said, do you want to go through with this? They always give you an option. <clears throat> and for me, it was a no brainer, yes. Because someone else, God has given you something in your blood that can help someone else. And for Kevin, we weren't able to do it. So it was a no brainer, I said yes. So the, whole, the way the process works, they first do a, a screening of you. They do a whole full body MOT. And then they make sure everything is okay before you can donate. The whole process is quite easy. They, they're with you the whole way through. They talk to you, have advisors, and <clears throat> they give you the date. So at that time, I was in Newcastle, University of my Masters. So you can imagine, I was like, oh, will this affect my studies? How long will it take? So they were quite good with it. They paid for my ticket. So the first thing they do is they give you tiny injections and nurse comes. So a nurse, co a nurse comes to your house, give you, gives you some tiny injections that kind of get the stem cells out from your bone marrow. So it goes to your bloodstream. And they paid for my tickets. They paid for the hotel. And on the day of the donation, I think that's when I realized how serious it is. Because I was sitting in the waiting room waiting to go in and donate. And there were people there as well. I didn't realize it. I, it turned out I was the only one there not for chemotherapy. Everyone else was a cancer, was, had cancer. And it was very, very, it, it just opened your eyes about how many, how many people were suffering. So after that day, I went in and what, they, what, you, what the process is, you just sit there and then they run your blood through a centrifuge. It kind of separates the stem cells and runs your blood back into your, into your body. And they were kind enough to pay for a hotel room for me and someone else. My dad came with me. Thanks, dad, for that. Um, so it was a very, it was not a scary process that people think. And after that day, after a couple of days, after actually a day, I was able to go back to everything. So when, so what I'd say is, it's not as scary as people think. I had that mentality as well. Bone marrow, they're going to go through, you know, drill my, you know, the back of my, it's like, I was like, no. But I think it's, is it 90% most of them? No, no. You're over 90% is not. And I'm telling you, you, just sit there for like eight hours. I was watching, I watched like a, eight episodes of a show called Friday Night Lights. I didn't even know what was happening. You know, it was just so calm. But then that saved someone's life. You know, you know, it's not just one person, that person. Also the families of the people were affected. You know how Auntie was affected, Ian, the whole Kenyan community was affected by this death. So what I'd say is if that call comes, I'd ask you to say yes to it because it's not just saving one person's life, affecting a whole community around. So if you've not swabbed, if, you, if, you're not, if you're not being swabbed, there are gonna be people who are gonna be taking your names and swabbing you. You never know, that call might be you. I, I, I would have never imagined it would have been me. Yeah. And if you want any more details of how the process works and how I went through it, just yeah, have, have, come have a chat with me, Auntie. I think Ian went through some the same process as well. So feel free to have a chat with us. And you never know, you might be saving someone's life. In 2012, when I was, I think I was like hoping for Kevin. Unfortunately, after Kevin died, I was like, oh, I might, might, you know, never know. But then that call came nearly four years later. So you never know. So I'd ask you if you'd, when you get that call and you've had a register, please register.